Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about what oil is the best for a Mazda RX-7 FD. Well, first off, the owner's manual calls for a 10W30. Now they tell you to adjust depending on your temperature, but 10W30 should cover most of the temperatures around your area. Now, after doing some research both on the forums and on the mystical websites and all the super master RX-7 gurus out there, I came to find out that there is a little bit of debate about the oil. It's a little bit more complicated than I thought when it comes to what people use. And pretty much I'm going to simplify it as best as I can. So first off, what do I use? 10W30. Now, what do most people use? This uh, 20W50, which in my opinion is like molasses, but Technically, the people who are using this are not wrong, and then we'll talk about do you get synthetic or conventional, and then hopefully you will walk away with an answer with what oil you should use for your RX-7. Well, first off, I'm a firm believer that the engineers who built the car know best. But after doing some extensive research, I found out that a lot of people use this oil because of the temperatures and the modifications they do to the RX-7. Now, this typical 10W30 weight is seen across the board in a lot of vehicles. As a matter of fact, my 1991 Acura NSX took it, and I believe that my Supra either took a 10W40 or 10W30, but it looks like this is a pretty uh, conventional and well-used oil across cars, but the 20W50 is a pretty rare one. Now, it all depends on temperature based on what I read. Well, first off, here in Colorado, where I live in Grand Junction, the summers could get really hot. We could see 100 degrees, and that's dry, really hot. And then you put on the temperatures that a rotary produces. A lot of people feel that a 10W30 isn't up to the job to handle those temperatures, especially if you have some modifications, if you have BPU plus, you know, like a downpipe, a tune, a bigger turbo, exhaust, uh, bigger injectors. And essentially the more power you're building, the more heat you're building. And based on what people believe, and now this is outside of what the manufacturer says, but just tuners and car enthusiasts and car owners, they say that the 20W50 is a great oil for the summertime for the hot time. So pretty much the hottest time of the year in your uh, country, people are recommending 20W50. Now, should you use synthetic or conventional oil? So conventional oil is essentially pure mineral oil and synthetic oil is pretty much what it sounds like. It's just a synthetic oil where all these smart scientists got together and they developed these uh, oils that have great properties that cover a lot of things that a car would need under certain stresses. And that's why I think that most uh, oils are going to do a great job throughout the heat range. But I wanted to share the data with you, you know, circling back about the 20W50 and why people use it as far as the heat. Now, I am sticking with this brand. Like, that's it. Conventional oil. And the reason why is because in the manual it says don't use synthetics. Now, I read a long form and I, I read a lot of people's suggestions and opinions. I even read about one guy who said he spoke with the lead engineer of the RX-7 and the reason why they said no synthetics is because they uh, couldn't really come to the consensus which synthetic to approve. Because back in the day, synthetic was a big deal. I, if you guys aren't old enough, when synthetic was first coming out, you would go to a dealership or to a service shop and it'd be like, do you want synthetic? And it was like a big deal when it came out. And essentially the synthetic back then and now are very different. And the problem with it is that the rotary engine kind of utilizes oil in, the com in its combustion process. And essentially that synthetic oil uh, is going to have a different flash point and it's going to leave stuff behind. It's not going to burn well and it's just not a, a good oil to use. So they put that in the owner's manual, don't use synthetic oil. But a lot of people have said they've been using Mobile One with no problem, that they've been using Royal Purple, blah, blah, blah. But you know what, again, even though it could have been, like some people said, a marketing thing or a, a lawyer thing, a legal thing, if it says no synthetic, that's not a big deal because this oil right here is a 
good oil. Uh, Castro is a, a very good oil. I've been seeing people using this oil for a long time in RX-7s. It's the right weight, it's conventional, and it's, it's gonna work. So that's what I'm sticking with. Now, when I first got the car, I didn't really know what was done to it. So I changed my own fluids, and the owner told me that they had a specific rotary oil design, synthetic rotary oil that's specifically designed for rotary uh, uh, engines, and, um, and they were using a 12W50. Now the car drove fine, but I switched out that 20W50 with the 10W30 here, um, because I don't beat on my cars, I just drive them. And, and during the summer, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not out and about in heat anyways. Um, if so, I'm driving my daily. But I could tell you right away that when I switched these oils, there was definitely a difference in the way that the engine reacted. And that's not a placebo effect because 10W50 is really, really thick. As a matter of fact, if you were to put this in a different type of engine, you would probably blow it up because the lubrication system, and the internal lubrication system in most engines wouldn't be able to handle how thick that is. Now, the 10W30, I mean, I put it in there, the, the engine seems fine, and it seems a little bit more happier. It seems like it just, it's, I feel like the rotational mass is just a lot less uh, uh, constrained with that thicker viscous. Now, if you think I'm crazy, if you look at a lot of the newer cars, like my wife's car calls for a 5W20, um, and the reason why is because if you use a different oil, you're gonna get a different mileage per gallon, a different MPG. Believe it or not, your oil weight can impact the, um, how much fuel economy you get. And it goes back to if that oil is very thick and if it's, you know, if it is causing resistance, then an engine has to overcome that resistance and use more force and use more energy. And that's kind of why I feel that the 10W50 is kind of excessive. Now, if I run a 10W30 all year long, I would be 100% okay with that. But if I am going to a track day in the middle of the summer, I might put 20W50 just to be safe, but I feel a lot more safer with 10W30. So at the end of the day, I hope you got a lot of information. If you wanna know exactly what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. I'm using 10W30 with the exception if I'm doing a track day or we're breaking record heats, then I might do a 20W50, but I'm sticking with conventional 10W30, like the owner manuals says. But again, my car is stock. I did wanna make that note. It's only got an exhaust. So if you got a different setup, a modified setup, it might call for a different oil. Well guys, I hope you found this information important and, and valuable. If so, press that like button, subscribe. We have a lot of great videos already on the RX-7, how to remove your upper intake manifold, how to replace your uh, intake ambient temperature sensor, which is a big deal, how to read your engine codes, how to replace your air filter, and we're gonna be doing a lot more videos. But again, we appreciate you watching. You take care, stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon.